CNN international diplomatic editor Nick Robertson is joining us right now. Nick, thanks very much for, for coming in. I know you're in Washington. You were in Moscow just uh, a week or so ago, uh, but now you're here. I want to uh, read to our viewers a couple lines from this really powerful article you just posted on CNN.com. I highly recommend it. Uh, it, it, was, it was really moving, but let me uh, give a couple lines from what you write. Quote, uh, after over three decades of covering Russia, I leave in despair. One man has extinguished the bright hope many once felt. And then you add, Russian President Vladimir Putin isn't just destroying Ukraine, but two nations condemning Russians to an isolation that they didn't necessarily choose. Explain your thoughts, because they are so, so powerful. Russia's under sanctions. These sanctions are aimed to bring Putin down, or at least halt his invasion and, and war in Ukraine. They're going to affect the Russian population. The Russian population, many of them, don't support Putin and don't support the war, but they're going to suffer the economic consequences. He's told his oligarchs, who we know are getting sanctioned, are having their yachts seized in Europe, he's told them to suck it up, be patriotic. But it's those other Russians who wanted a different future, a future integrated into Europe that he steadily stifled over the years. That's one part that made me, made me angry about the situation and the absolute wanton way that he has gone to war on a false pretext and continues to push that pretext and absolutely stomps on any voice of dissent. That's what, when you're there watching it happen, that's what gets you. Because you were there back in 1990 as the Cold War was ending, the collapse of the Soviet Union. I was there December 91 uh, when the Soviet Union ended. Uh, all of us were pretty upbeat that things were moving in a, in a brand new direction. We had that sense, and, and it, rightfully so. Uh, I, I remember we, we set up CNN, we set up a big live uh, operation in the middle of Red Square, that fabled military parade ground right outside the Kremlin. The Russians gave us, or the Soviet Union, gave us the opportunity to do that. We broadcast live for several days. At that time, you, you had the sense that this was a country that wanted to integrate to the West. Fast forward a decade, Putin comes to power. All those changes, all that alignment towards a European-style democracy and integrating with the rest of the world, he said that was wrong. And he's reversed it, tried to reverse that position ever since with his different invasions and now in Ukraine. And that, I think, you know, tells you, because of his complete power there, it tells you that, that Russia is, at the moment, Putin. And it's Putin that is trying to drag his country back to some imagined former glory. And that, at the moment, is to the detriment of the vast majority of Russians. Yeah, and certainly to the detriment of millions of people Huge. in Ukraine right now. Uh, I originally thought, well, Putin, uh, maybe he'll do something along the border, like he did with the Crimea. But uh, I'm I was surprised when he decided to go and attack all of Ukraine and trying to seek control of that country. That came as a surprise to me. And it, and it did to me as well. We heard him threaten. We heard him threaten military technical measures if we don't get what we want with, with NATO. NATO needs to roll back. It needs to go back to 1997. It needs to stop Ukraine becoming a member. I think people thought this was just Putin wanting a voice at the table. Once he got his voice at the table, he wouldn't follow through. But he's become more and more determined. And we're now in a position of looking at the scenario going forward. Putin is taking tracts of land, territory, cities. We've seen a, a mayor of a town marched off today, a proxy installed in, his, in, in, in the mayor's place. The future, therefore, in Putin's mind in Ukraine is going to be more of that. What happens? Well, where is the war going to stop? And how do you get Putin then to let go of these places and give them back to the Ukrainians? Because it's going to be a very, very long war for them, painful, huge losses. How do we turn, how do we get Putin to push back? And I don't, I don't see that right now. I don't see where that mechanism is. You were doing great reporting uh, from Moscow over these past few months. Jill Doherty was doing great reporting from Moscow. Everybody has basically fled, left Moscow out of fear that if they reported the truth, about the Russian invasion of Ukraine, they could wind up in jail for 15 years. What, what's it like for the media in Moscow right now? There was a moment during the opening days of the war when you knew you had space to go out where the protests were, were happening and to stand shoulder to shoulder with the protesters, elbow to elbow with the riot cops, and know that they weren't going to round you up, that you were very unlikely to be thrown in the truck with the rest of the protesters. That's gone. So when you're in that truck, Putin essentially is in, has created a state where 
He can decide on what the rules and laws are going to be, and he has a massive apparatus to follow through those rules. It's very much looking, back, looking like the sort of Germany under the Nazis before World War II. Remember what we heard from the Nazis, I was just following the rules, I was just following the rules. Putin is creating the rules and there is a system and a, and a law enforcement body and people that will follow those rules. And that's what's happening. So you end up being arrested today, you really don't know when you're going to come out the end of that, that legal chain. You've been doing amazing reporting for us, not just now, but all of these years, going back 30 years together. We did the first Gulf War as well here on CNN, and we're grateful to you, Nick, for, you. for doing everything you're doing. Thanks very much. Thank and let me recommend to our viewers, if they haven't read it, go to CNN.com and read uh, Nick Robertson's excellent, very powerful, moving article about Russia, CNN.com.